Uh, for those of you whom I have not yet met, my name is Chris Carlsmith. I'm currently the chair of the department. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome uh, our faculty who have uh, carefully self-segregated themselves in the back <laughs> row there. Um, and also uh, our family of the graduates of whom we have a, a number tonight. And we're delighted. And they are right down front. Where they yes. <laughs> and we have a late arriving guest. <laughs> Oh God. Come on. Um, and then we also have uh, uh, friends of the graduates whom we're also uh, very pleased to welcome here. And of course, we have uh, the graduates themselves, which is the reason, of course, that we, uh, that we are all here. So um, most of most, uh, I think about 60% um, of the graduates for December are here tonight. We have several who are working or had class or otherwise could not attend. Uh, but they're all recognized in the graduation program, uh, which most of you should have on your seats. Uh, and we very much hope that uh, all of the graduates that are here tonight and those who couldn't make it tonight will join us again in mid-May at the Sangus Arena when we do it, you know, for real with 3,000 people and graduation <laughs> robes and a speaker and, and so on and so forth. Um, so in prior semesters, uh, when we've had this uh, ceremony, which we do in December and in April, I've used this occasion as uh, an opportunity to reflect a bit about ways in which the current semester might be seen as historic. Uh, or to put it another way, have there been events this semester that when our graduates look back on this in a year or five years or 10 years, they will say, gosh, I remember that event. That was my last semester uh, of being in college. And in my case, for example, uh, there were two dominant events in the spring of 1986. Uh, one was the meltdown of the nuclear reactor at Chernobyl, which I think it's fair to say time has proven that really was a significant event, and it's one that we still talk about. Um, and the other was the fierce debate over apartheid and divestment uh, from my university and from many other universities. And we don't really talk about that anymore, but it was a significant turning point, I think. Um, so as our current graduates think about what might be historic, uh, one might of course, look at the recent midterm election results and say that uh, those are historic. And I think they are in the sense that it's the first time in 20 years. I look to my Americanist colleagues here. <laughs> it will be the first time in two decades that the party in power did not lose uh, both houses of Congress. Uh, or one might point to COP27, right, held in Egypt just a couple of weeks ago, uh, the first time that certain uh, nations in the West have acknowledged the idea of reparations uh, as damage for climate change. Um, or maybe we'll realize in 10 or 15 years that Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter <laughs> is in fact uh, you know, a historic occasion in whatever way that turns out to be. Um, or maybe it'll turn out to be the World Cup, uh, not so much for who the winner is going to be, we'll find out on December 20th, uh, but for the fact uh, of its location right in Qatar and of its timing, uh, not in the summer but in the middle of the normal uh, European season. So whichever of those events it turns out to be, and I have no doubt that the graduates tonight will have alternate events or individuals uh, or turning points that they would, uh, that they would identify, um, it seems to me that, um, that our history majors have been trained to do exactly this. That is to analyze events in the past or in the present um, and to figure out what their significance is, uh, how those events represent change over time, uh, ways in which we can identify sort of the wheat from the chaff uh, in terms of what are the, the events and the, and the personalities uh, that really matter. Now we, uh, the faculty and I, uh, train the students primarily to look at events in the past, of course, right? That's why we're historians and not political scientists, for example. Uh, but we also keep an eye on the present so that we can apply these lessons of the past um, to today. And as our graduates go into the world as teachers, as editors, as museum professionals, as librarians, as administrators, right, they take a wide variety of career paths. Uh, we know that they will bring with them these skills of analysis, critical thinking, uh, public speaking, <clears throat> and, uh, and writing clearly about the world around us. So we are delighted uh, to know that they are going to make the world a better place, and we are proud of them for going out and representing um, our department and our profession uh, as they go into the broader world, as indeed some of them have already been doing, and I'll say a bit more about that uh, later tonight. So as you can see from the printed program, we have four student speakers tonight. Uh, they were selected by the faculty, um, and I should tell you uh, 
uh, that we have not previewed their remarks, <laughs> <laughs> and we have not given them specific instructions other than to ask them to reflect on their time at UMass Lowell and what's been important to them during their time as uh, a history major. Um, so uh, those four, as you can see in the program, are Ari Fleischer, Jenny Quinn, Jenna Sade, and Kelvin Sanchez. And uh, I will invite them to come up and speak one after the other, and then we will proceed to the distribution of the coffee mugs, which is always the highlight of anybody's uh, time here. Uh, we'll start with Jenny Quinn, uh, and then Ari Fleischer, and then Jenna and Calvin um, will be our MC uh, for the final event. Jenny, please come on forward. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming to see us tonight. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what I have learned about being a historian here at UML. Um, a required course for every history major is historical methods. Uh, it is, in essence, how to be a good historian. On my very first day here, Professor Pearson gave my historical methods class an assignment on our first day. <laughs> he told us to justify why history should be taught. In a world where the demands for STEM, for computer science, are ever increasing, why should history departments continue to be funded? I thought, as a micro job, <laughs> shouldn't the professors be the ones justifying to the school why their department should still be funded? My first day at this new school, and I'm already being asked to do their work for them, so I'm not such a start. <laughs> but I took the assignment seriously and found that I now have an answer. <clears throat> I chose history when I first started here because I liked it. I enjoyed it. I've always had an interest in it had American Girl dolls growing up, you know. <laughs> now I study history because I see the potential it has to revise injustice and to promote understanding. My time has also made me acutely aware of the power that authoring narratives of the past has and the responsibility that we have as historians to do it well. Witnessing brings with it responsibility. When it involves other human beings, then it brings with it ethical, social, and political responsibility. History needs to be taught because it imbues us with the power of the witness. When we witness, we not only have the responsibility to do right by others, but the ability. I would think to thank the UML History Department for opening up their doors to all of us and for embracing us and for using their good historians to teach future good historians. surprise to those who do know me, I wrote a lot. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, this might be a few more minutes than Jenny's. Um, but when I was asked to say a few words uh, at this party, I immediately said yes, because I will take any opportunity I can get to tell people how much they mean to me. And when I reflect on the last three and a half years, most of the people who have made the biggest impact on me here at UMass Lowell are in this room tonight. So I want to go back to before I even started at UMass Lowell. Uh, because when I was a senior in high school, I had no idea where I wanted to go to college. I didn't know if I wanted a big school, small, private, public, urban, rural. It's not even really that I didn't know it, but I didn't really care. Um, I didn't have a preference. So I went to a bunch of accepted students days to try and figure out which school I would pick because my guidance counselor told me it's not those factors, it's the people that make the school. So I was like, okay, I'll listen. And I went to those accepted students days and UMass will happen to be the last one of all of the ones that I went to. Um, and again, what should come as no surprise, I went to the wrong open house that day. <laughs> I went to the Department of Education, thinking, I want to be a history teacher, I'll go to the Education Department, only to find out that you get your bachelor's in history and then your master's in education. <laughs> so I scurried over to this little hole in the wall in Dugan Hall and saw a man in a bow tie piling up some papers in an empty room. <laughs> I'll give you one guess as to who that man was. <laughs> I went to turn around and leave, saying to my parents that we'd missed our chance. But my mom pushed through the door 
and introduce herself to Dr. Chandler and Dr. Carl Smith. Extremely embarrassed, I walked through and introduced myself as well. And Dr. Carl Smith frantically put all the course flyers back on the table. <laughs> and then they spent 20 minutes talking with me about UMass Law's history department. And when we left, I got in the car and knew that UMass Law was the place for me. That fall, I started here as a freshman. And when thinking about freshman year, one class sticks out in my mind as a formative experience in my undergrad. It was a one credit class that met once a week for 50 minutes. It was the freshman first year seminar, one that we are all required to take. There were no desks in this room, just a few tables shaped in a horseshoe. And to put it nicely, you could not hide in this room. Four people in that class would become some of my closest friends during my undergrad. And in the following fall, during historical methods, I got to know more history majors who were also sophomores through our weekly Zoom meetings. When we returned to campus junior year, six of us quickly became known as a herd that traveled together. <laughs> and one professor dubbed us the corner crew, and it just kind of stuck. <laughs> While others probably see us and just go, oh, them. <laughs> we signed up for classes together, and it became rare and likely concerning to those who know us to see one of us alone. My phone quickly accumulated group chat classics, such as Dugan Girls, History Homies, and of course, the Corner Crew. And I cannot forget the ever-famous squirrely groundhogs. <laughs> I feel truly lucky that I have made friends in this department who have been there through every step of undergrad with me, and have made even my most difficult classes enjoyable and something to look forward to. As history majors, these people, my friends, simply understand what I'm going through. Whether it's being the only students in class who automatically cite Chicago Turabian style, or being the nerds who get excited when a professor has a slide on the history of whatever subject we're learning. My friends and I are always on the same page. One day, Jennifer and I were having a conversation about how we've gotten this almost god complex from the history department, because in our classes this semester, many of which are arts and humanities or free electives, we've continually found ourselves too stunned to speak at some of the things that other students in our classes say, or their expectations. <laughs> Jennifer explained that she had a professor ask students to find a scholarly article on a topic in literature, and was shocked that every article she found on the topic was at most eight pages. Where are the actual scholarly articles, she asked, the 40 pages we're used to? I expressed my own confusion when one of my professors said that four pages for a reflection paper was far more than expected. <laughs> what do you mean it's more than expected? Reflection papers are four to five pages minimum. <laughs> Something about the safety of this department and knowing that the people here understand what I mean and am going through is so comforting. One part of this department, however, deserves a special shout out in my opinion. At some point in my junior year, I sat down at the table in the middle of the office one day. Nobody said anything. <laughs> I'm not sure why, I assumed I'd be asked to leave, but when I wasn't, I wondered if maybe I was allowed to sit there. <laughs> so I began spending more and more time sitting at that table, and what started as a quiet workspace quickly became my favorite place to hang out on campus. Soon enough, professors started to come out and sit and chat with me during their office hours, or peers would come by to get their work done with me. And quickly, that table became like my own office. <laughs> I have had days where I've spent more time at that table than I have in my actual classes. And the middle <coughs> and so sorry. <laughs> the next line is don't even get me started on the floor of the office. <laughs> Honestly, sitting in comfy chairs in the middle of the department office and getting to see everyone who comes through or walks by, chatting with my peers and professors in passing, what could be better? For me, very little. But it's not the comfy chairs that kept me coming back, it's the people. Returning to campus after a year and a half of Zoom classes, I long to connect with the people who make this department what it is. While I've only had classes with about five professors in this department, I have had the chance to get to know almost every faculty member here because of that silly little table in Dugan 106, or because of history club events. The first day of classes this semester, the corner crew and I came in to the history office and sat down at the table, as we do. And I saw Ellen in her office, so I went to introduce myself and ask if she was okay with us sitting there, because it was her first day and I didn't want to scare her. <laughs> but she informed me that she'd already been briefed on us. <laughs> My schedule this semester was kind of crazy, because I had breaks that were three to four hours long, so I have gotten to spend a lot of time at that table. My dad has continually joked that I need to start paying Dr. Carl Smith my rent for being there so much. <laughs> but really, I think it's Ellen who deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for sitting up with me and chatting all the time. From day one, she's been cool with me sitting at the table, never judged the days where I sat on the floor instead, always encouraged me to have one more cookie from those catering trays, and she helped me to think critically during some very important conversations we have in 106, such as, 
do nut butters and milk alternatives really count as dairy, <laughs> to whether or not canoes were used in the great squirrel migration of 1811, and even topics such as why were cats always painted looking so horrifying in medieval art. <laughs> if you are not familiar, I recommend looking it up. Prepare for nightmares. It is also the stuff of thrilling conversation in 106. I was asked to speak specifically about my peers when reflecting on my experience as history as a history major at UMass Lowell, but my experience would not have been what it was without my professors. And I can text the corner crew whenever I want. Unfortunately, I can't do that with faculty, so bear with me for one more minute. Every professor I've had a class with in this department has made an impact on my undergraduate experience, but a few in particular have, there, have really changed me. In a two-year span, I took five classes with Professor Pearson and four with Professor Strobel. And while they will both probably cringe at me calling them out right now, there's no way I wasn't going to take the opportunity to thank them, because between the two of them, I've learned so much. Jenna convinced me to sign up for America in the World sophomore year. It was my only class on Blackboard Collaborate, and I think Jenna and I were the only underclassmen in that class. I remember being very stressed over our first paper assignment, and all of the upperclassmen, such as Serena, telling me there was literally nothing to worry about. And honestly, they were right. Professor Strobel has this way of teaching where you don't realize you're learning things. <laughs> you teach it, and you don't realize he's teaching until you're two hours into a 3 to 6 p.m. class, and he throws his car keys across the room at the wall and goes, write down what just happened. Go. <laughs> I signed up for my final history course this semester with Professor Strobel, and despite it being from 5 to 6.15, twice a week, kind of a drag for a senior schedule, it has truly been a joy to get to experience one final Strobel class. Professor Pearson, I first had in the fall of my sophomore year for historical methods. As I mentioned earlier, that class was basically an intro on how to be a good history major. And Professor Pearson let me write my final research paper for the class on the history of my high school's mascot, the Grey Ghost. The paper ended up being 15 pages, and he read every word of it. He worked with me to make the paper better and to make me a better student. I then signed up for every class I could with him in the following three semesters, and was truly devastated when I couldn't fit one more in this semester. But Professor Pearson continued to make time for me during his office hours just to chat, knowing I was having withdrawals from his classes. <laughs> <laughs> I truly can't thank Professor Pearson and Strobel enough for being such staples in my undergrad experience. I'd like to end my not-so-short speech about this department thanking Dr. Carl Smith. I somehow managed to make it through my undergrad without ever taking a class with him, <laughs> but he has been essential in my experience here at UMass Lowell. After that open house in the spring of my senior year of high school, I received a letter in the mail from UMass Lowell, which I saved and still have. The card was a handwritten thank you note for attending the history department event, and it ended with, we hope to see you on campus in the fall with best wishes, Dr. Carl Smith. I left the open house that day, as I said, pretty confident that UMass Lowell was the place for me, but when I received the nice handwritten note, I knew there was something special about this department. Dr. Carl Smith has done nothing if not constantly humor me. From <laughs> the big mural project that will never happen, to taking over his department office for history club events like a historic cookie party. Not once, but twice. <laughs> he has always been there to support me in whatever ways I needed. What I will take away most from my time in this special department is not just the content I learned in my classes, but these special relationships I have gotten to form with my peers and professors. The UMass Lowell History Department has made me a better historian, a better student, and a better person. And for that, I am truly grateful. Aww. Well, now I have to try to top that, and that's not really good. <laughs> 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 Alrighty, hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I am Jenna. I'll try my best to talk Ari. Really good. <laughs> and Jenny too. <laughs> when I was first asked by Professor Pearson to speak about my time here at UMass Lowell, I was so excited. Naturally, the first thing I thought was, oh god, what am I going to say? Where am I going to start? But when I reflect on my time here as a history major and remember, or sorry, when I reflect this my time here as a history major and member of the Corner Crew, as a certain group of us tend to be referred to, if you haven't picked up on that already. <laughs> or whether it was my time spent in the various leadership roles I have had here on campus as a Jumpstart team leader or program assistant, tour guide, orientation leader, or the Riverhawk Scholars Academy, and of course the list goes on because I'm me. <laughs> the main thing that stood out most to me was something that came before all of this. It was really the foundation as to why I chose UMass Lowell. And it was actually the first time I was introduced to this wonderful department. 
Similarly to Ari, I also attended that Welcome Day event. As a first generation college student, I wasn't one to really go on college tours. Those were kind of foreign to me. It was a resource I didn't necessarily have easily available, but one day, one of my friends, who was actually a student here and graduated class of 2021 in exercise science, she was back home in Framingham, and she asked me, Jenna, do you wanna to go to UMass Lowell with me? I have to go like drop something off at the department. And I was like, yeah, why not? I didn't have school that day. I was like, sure, why not? Let me, let me explore, because I hadn't considered UMass Lowell as an option prior to that. Um, so she dragged me with her and I walked into Dugan because she went into the Dean's Suite, which is also in Dugan for Health Sciences, and I walked right past the History Department and I thought, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. And she urged me to go inside, but I was like, no. <laughs> after, eventually, after having come to a welcome day in March 2019 as a prospective student and having met many adults, learned about many on-campus resources, and shook many, many hands. <laughs> Professor Carl Smith stood out to me. I always knew I wanted to study history, as I was inspired by the awesome teachers I had in high school. So when I interacted with Professor Carl Smith and Professor Abigail Chandler as well, in addition to a previous history student who spoke highly of her time here, part of me knew that UMass Lowell was it for me. They made an effort to get to know me that day, and I wasn't just another face in the room of Dugan 106 of prospective students who might come here or who might not but rather I was Jenna, a potential freshman who was most definitely going to be a part of UMass Lowell's history department one day, and I made that happen. <laughs> I've gotten to know many stellar faculty and staff members as I have grown alongside my classmates from being a high school graduate to now college senior, corner crew member, and flourishing historian. I've spent hours stressing over assignments, staring at walls as I like to call it, <laughs> giggling in the history office, or going on silly little mental health walks with Ari and Ashlyn, <laughs> the corner crew gals, or as we originally called ourselves circa fall 2019, the Lafferty Smith Squad. That's a story for later, feel free to ask. <laughs> <laughs> the friendships I built at UMass Lowell are ones I hope that will last a lifetime, as UMass Lowell has been my home away from home for the last three and a half years, and the faculty and staff who have who I have interacted with along the way have made it so. I would also like to recognize the History Department's generous scholarships, which I've been awarded for a few semesters during my time here. Their investment in my education, along with others, provi provided me the reminder to keep pushing through, even when it was the point of the semester, AKA right now, <laughs> when it felt like my spark was flickering. This morning, if you didn't know, I gave a college tour <laughs> to 75 alone, 75, 13, and 14 year olds, oh. and it was a time. However, <laughs> at the end of the tour, one of the students came up to me and she asked me if I would do this again. I wouldn't trade the last three and a half years for anything, pandemic and all. I wanna thank everyone I've interacted with along the way, whether it was directly or in passing, for being a part of this chapter of my life, so thank you. <laughs> well, hello everyone. Uh, if you don't know me, I am Calvin Sanchez. I've been here for about uh, 3.5 years and taking classes in UMass Lowell. Uh, my story starts pretty differently, I would say, for everyone else. I did not start as a history major. I didn't even think about becoming a history major <laughs> coming here. Um, originally, I picked UMass Lowell because it was well known for STEM. and. I originally came here as a computer engineer and um, had about a, s a semester of that and I did not really enjoy it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I did pretty well. I, I always try to do my best, always. Uh, I just After that, I was like, no, this is not it. So then after that, I was I then decided to do computer science and I also didn't really like that. So <laughs> I then kind of sat down and you know my advisor at the time 
and then I just started brainstorming like what should I do and I was thinking about what did I like before I came here and then I remember how much I just love history and just engaging with history so then and about uh, this was right before uh, the pandemic I remember this because uh, uh, the, the, it started when we started going online. It, it was in my first uh, time taking a uh, world civilization one uh, with Catherine Scherzen. And uh, we have big, big ups for her. Uh, great class. <laughs> and um, there is kind of where I started my journey of being in the history department. And then the semester after that, world civilization is where I took historical methods with many of the People have talked here before, and <laughs> you have seen them in here. It's just it, that that historical methods class just kind of was just everybody just came there at the same time. Which I don't know how it happened, but very very thankful that happened with Peterson. That great class uh, learned a lot, and I really learned the value of being a historian there. As uh, Jenny said, of just how useful history is and just in throughout the throughout the years I've been taking classes here really have been just learning how important it is how important it is to have historians and people that kind of moderate and control history because if history falls into the hands of those that shouldn't really control it really <laughs> bad things can happen when history is just manipulated and it can be used for very evil deeds and i really have enjoyed my time here with everyone and uh i would i would do it again so, uh, not the co not the cost part <laughs> 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 but uh, uh you know if, if it's free <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, uh, well talk, talk about my experience of why up here uh, again, like everyone else, I wasn't really that instantly convinced to walk up here. I was much more thoughtful, like, oh, I have to speak in public <laughs> for everyone. I was not really interested. You know, I was making a script and all this, and then I come up here and I'm just ad living the whole thing. <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I really love this apartment, and that is why I decided to come up here and do this because. You know, this is like the last hurrah. I gotta, I have to do something for this department, and you know, I, I can't wait. And maybe I might come back for graduate school. Because I like the place that much, <laughs> and um, I do think that UMass Lowell was a great choice uh, for a history department. Uh, to have a history department, great history department, uh, very well funded. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. Originally, again, I, I thought this was a, I thought this was only a STEM school. I didn't know there was a history department here, uh, so uh, pretty pleasant surprise that I uh, ended up here and everyone else here. And um, I'm also a, a first generation um, college student. Uh, my, 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 my mother, my grandmother, so I didn't really get the opportunity to, you know, get to go to college. I kind of just had to go from, you know, one factory job to another it's you know and I you know I remember in high school I was thinking of like I really wanted to go to college from high school and that was decided because I, I, I really wanted to make them proud and I'm very thankful that they're, they're present here and uh, be, be excited about that and um, <laughs> I don't really know where I should go next so I think I should talk about kind of like what what would uh, what will we do? You know, kind of type of thing. Uh, because uh, I always been asked, uh, what what am I going to do after UMass Lowell? And you know, personally, still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, I, I I am very thankful for the history department, and I will try to stay in touch with the history department and the history club because. I really did enjoy my experience here, and of course, there's still the big graduation in, in May, so uh, I'm very excited. I hope I get to see everyone there, and I hope everybody here has a wonderful night.
Well, I, I think you got a terrific sense there of, <clears throat> uh, of our graduates, of our students, um, of why my colleagues and I love teaching <coughs> in this department uh, and why we look forward to coming to work every week, uh, especially when we are greeted by the corner crew the second we step <laughs> through the door into what used to be our <laughs> has since been colonized. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, before um, uh, we formally recognize um, the students who are graduating this semester, um, I have a couple of other uh, brief items to mention. Um, one of those is that uh, the department um, every semester likes to recognize those students uh, who have exceptionally high academic achievement um, and uh, to give them a book award, uh, which is a book of their choice uh, that the department purchases. Um, typically, uh, that's one, occasionally two students. Uh, I'm delighted to tell you that this semester we have five. Uh, wow. I think it's really a testament to... Wow. And uh, all five of the students have uh, selected their books. Um, three of them have already arrived. The other two are coming next week to the bookstore, and we will make sure uh, that they get them. Um, uh, so I'd like to uh, recognize the students and to present uh, them with their book awards. Kelvin Sanchez. Jenna <laughs> Sadek. And Jenny Kelly. Yay! The other, two <laughs> the other two recipients of the award uh, are Ari Fleischer and Todd, sorry, I always get this wrong, no, Pecora. 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 And then uh, finally, uh, I have a, an unscripted award, which I will, I will call the Chair's Award. Um, and. Uh, and that is to be presented to Ari Fleischer uh, for her selfless devotion to the department and the way in which she has encouraged a sense of community. Um, the university has talked an enormous amount uh, in the last year or two about the importance of community, particularly as we return from COVID, uh, from, from being remote to being in person, uh, to requiring the faculty, for example, uh, to be in their offices for office hours in person, to come to faculty meetings in person, uh, to have classes that are taught in person and to have events in person. And Ari has really has been an enormously important factor uh, in helping us to, um, to achieve that and to figure out uh, fun and entertaining ways um, to do that. So um, I'd like to recognize her with, um, with this um, award. Uh, it is a blanket emblazoned with the UMass Lowell History Club. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So the next part of our um, ceremony is where I would like to briefly recognize each of our graduates and ask them to, uh, to come up and receive a ceremonial UMass Lowell History Club History <laughs> Alum coffee mug. Um, these are not available in stores. Uh, you, them. you can only get one when you graduate. Um, and in the case of Serena, she's going to get a second when she finishes her master's degree. She has to finish that degree first. <laughs> Uh, so our first graduate uh, tonight is Josh Arsikowski. Uh, Josh transferred from computer science to history, uh, and he did so on the 18th of March, 2020. And you don't have to be a historian to recognize the significance of that date, right? It was when the, the department, the university, the state, uh, the country began to shut down because of the COVID uh, epidemic. Um, since that time, Josh has been working steadily towards his history degree, uh, and I'm delighted to say that he's also added a minor in medieval and renaissance studies, which is close to my own heart. Um, he tells me that his favorite 
history class here has been Early Christianity with Professor Andrew Drinas, who is not with us tonight, but who also served as Josh's uh, faculty advisor. Uh, and Josh tells me that he plans to pursue a job with a local museum following graduation. Uh, and partly in, in, uh, for that, I'm delighted to say that he has not yet picked up his copy of Careers for History Majors. <laughs> Before he graduates next week, we're going to make sure that he gets a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> our next graduate is Ari Fleischer. Now Ari, as you know, has been deeply involved with the history department and with the university more broadly ever since she arrived on campus on that fateful day when she met Dr. Chandler uh, and I. Uh, at the university level, she's been a student alumni ambassador, uh, similar to Brian Pools, who graduated last year, and Deirdre Hutchinson, who's gonna graduate next semester. Um, and all of them, I discovered when I was on the internet earlier this week, uh, featured in a photograph with uh, Jackie Maloney, our chancellor, in that job as student alumni ambassador. Uh, Ari has also been very involved with her sorority, but it's chiefly at the department level, at least from my perspective, uh, <laughs> that she has been most visible. Uh, she is a member of Phi Alpha Theta, and she's regularly assisted me and the other faculty with uh, admissions, uh, open houses, and welcome days. She's offered a number of ideas to improve the sense of community within the department, as I already alluded to. Uh, she, uh, and chief among those ideas, uh, is the creation of new merch, which we are all <laughs> proud uh, to wear. And, and there were many, many more of us wearing these last night uh, at the uh, historically themed cookie party, uh, which was just one of a number of events that Ari has organized in her capacity as the president of the History Club. Uh, she also made a signature contribution to the department. She fixed the department's Keurig coffee machine, <laughs> which 11 PhDs were unable to do. <laughs> 11 PhDs couldn't do it. That's awesome. Uh, as you've heard from, uh, from Ari herself and from Jenna, uh, and you will certainly hear it from everybody else, uh, Ari has made a, a habit of studying and chatting in the history department <laughs> lobby in 106 and coaxing her classmates to join her there. Uh, the faculty and I were delighted to have this happen. Uh, we really think it's a wonderful tradition um, and we hope very much that it will continue her infectious enthusiasm and her penchant for organizing uh, have a significant contribution uh, to the classroom or uh, education or whatever uh, career she chooses. Uh, to pursue. So, thank you, Ari. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next graduate is Jennifer Quinn. Uh, Jenny has been among uh, the most successful of our students at disseminating her research through conferences and presentations. She's also been a member of the Corner Gang. She went through historical methods, right? Many of these things that you've heard about. But I want to focus on this particular aspect of, of Jenny's career because I think it's somewhat singular uh, for her in, uh, in our department. Earlier this semester, she presented her research at a Phi Alpha Theta regional conference where she described her research on early American maps uh, that came from a course that she had with Dr. Abby Chandler. On the very next day, she also attended the conference sponsored by the New England Historical Association, NEHA, which was at Bentley University. And there she drew upon research that she had conducted with Professor Michael Pearson uh, two years before. <clears throat> that was for a paper entitled Practice Makes Parent, Training for Motherhood with Live Babies, 1919 to 1969. Uh, and in this article, she examined uh, newspaper articles from the Library of Congress over these five decades in order to understand how university courses in home economics use live infants in order to train students in childcare. For this latter conference, uh, I received an email on Monday morning from the director of the Mass Massachusetts Historical Society, uh, praising both the quality of Jenny's research and her polished delivery, an unsolicited email, I should say. Uh, <laughs> we are very proud of Jenny for uh, her scholarly achievements we hope very much that she will pursue this in graduate school, as she is considering doing. Perhaps before that, she says she might uh, pursue a job in a library. Whatever she does, we have no doubt that she will have great success, and we congratulate her tonight. Yay. Our 
Our next student is Jenna Sade. Uh, she has a really remarkable record of engagement with UMass Lowell. Um, she has been also, uh, like Ari, a student alumni ambassador, an admissions tour guide, and a repeat panelist for admissions welcome day and open house. Uh, initially, I selected her to work with me, uh, and she was so good that she was immediately snapped up by Karen Humphrey Johnson and started speaking for the whole university, <laughs> and I have not been able to get her back. <laughs> she's in such demand, which is terrific. Um, Jenna also participated in Lauren Fogel's study abroad trip in June 22, 2022 uh, to London and to Scotland. She's been a member of the Riverhawk Scholars Academy and has distinguished herself there. Uh, last year, she was an emerging scholar, uh, one of a small cadre of students that were selected by the university to work one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member, in this case, Professor Jane Sansonito. Uh, and she worked, they worked, I should say, on a project about coins in the ancient world and which are real and which are counterfeit. That led to a presentation <clears throat> last spring at a national conference of medieval scholars in Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh, and uh, it appears uh, that it may result in a scholarly uh, publication jointly authored by Jenna and by Jane. Um, Jenna is actively pursuing a job in higher education administration. Uh, she told me earlier this week that she sent out 30 letters of inquiry, um, and um, uh, she's also thinking uh, down the road, perhaps about a PhD in history. Uh, we have no doubt that she will have success in one or the other or both of those, whichever way we go. So we congratulate Jenna. <laughs> Todd Pecora came late, but we are going to recognize him. <laughs> um, Todd uh, joined us as a transfer student from Middlesex Community College in the fall of 2020, uh, and he's done really remarkably well uh, here at UMass Lowell uh, with a GPA of 3.94 and an induction into Phi Alpha Theta. Uh, he too has been a regular member of the Dugan 106 gang. Uh, it seems to me providing a welcome bit of gender balance there. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I've not taught Todd, uh, so I asked some of the faculty who have taught him, and Michael Pearson asked me to share this observation about him. Quote, we are so glad that you abandoned the cold, dark world of maintaining the electrical systems of buildings for the warm, bright world of history. <laughs> and we congratulate him. <laughs> Uh, lastly, Kelvin Sanchez. Kelvin came to us from Northern Essex Community College uh, in Lowell. As you heard, he began his career as a computer engineer, but he eventually realized that his heart was in the history department. Uh, he's taken a wide array of history classes here, including, I'm happy to say, my own Renaissance Reformation class this semester. Uh, from my own experience and from talking with the other faculty, um, we know that Kelvin is what I call a front row student. Uh, somebody who sits in the front row, somebody who pays careful attention, somebody who comes prepared for class, and somebody who asks good questions. Um, and uh, several of the faculty have confirmed to me that uh, when we were all on Zoom, uh, Kelvin was a master of the chat function. <laughs> and, uh, he really understood quickly how to use that for both relevant and thoughtful comments, and then would follow up uh, with a live comment as well. And any of you who have participated in a Zoom class know that that's not always the case. And so we as faculty are grateful for students who understand uh, how to do that and, and who do so. Uh, Calvin also is a regular attendee of the Dugan 106 lobby crowd, although my experience, my office is just off the lobby. Uh, Calvin is, on the, is an early bird for this group. He tends to come around 11, whereas Ari and the rest of the gang show up more like around 1. <laughs> and, uh, but they are all there, uh, and that uh, and that has been great. Um, uh, so we congratulate Calvin on um, uh, all of his achievements. And although he does not yet know what he's going to do come January, uh, we look forward very much to hearing about that. And we hope that he will stay in touch with us. Congratulations. <laughs>
Any other fall 22 graduates in the room? <laughs> I did once forget somebody, and so I don't ever want to do that again. You got to finish your degree. You do. <laughs> I'll see you in May, but not, but not in school. All right. Um, so then I'd like to conclude uh, this evening's event uh, with a brief quotation that I first heard at my own college graduation in 1986, and it was sort of a tradition that our college president would uh, read out this uh, quotation, uh, and he would, and I will too, cite the words of Adelaide Stevenson II. Uh, some of you may know he was a Democrat who served as the governor of Illinois and a Democratic presidential candidate and a UN ambassador in the 1950s and 1960s. Um, Stevenson uh, also was speaking at a graduation ceremony when he first uttered, uttered these words, and he gave this advice to those new graduates, quote, your days are short here. This is the last of your time at the university. And now, in the serenity and quiet of this place, touch the depths of truth, feel the hem of heaven. You will go away with old, good friends. And don't forget, when you leave, why you came. With those uh, words in mind, please join me one more time in thanking our fall 2022 history graduates and wishing them all the best. Yay! Yay!